This is Adam Rosh from Roshcast, and I want to welcome you to another episode of The Reveal, where I will take you inside the mind of a test taker to deconstruct and connect the dots of a board style question so you can become a better student, transform how you learn, and excel not only on high stakes exams, but also in your general medical knowledge. So let's get started. All right, we have a 38 year old man who presents to the emergency department with low back pain that began this morning when he rolled over in bed. Throughout the day, he tried ibuprofen and acetaminophen without relief, which prompted him to come to the emergency department for further evaluation. Which of the following historical findings is an indication for further investigation? All right, so the focus of this question is to identify historical findings. So we have to know a little bit about the topic being asked about, which is low back pain. And what we see here is an acute onset of low back pain. The patient has received some analgesia for it, but he's still in pain. And so most cases of back pain, as we know, pretty much a supportive care, ibuprofen, acetaminophen, and uh, maybe a short-term rest and then, and then, you know, maintain activity. But in this case, what we're looking for is a further investigation. Further investigation may include imaging, right? MRI, maybe plain film. And so out of these answer choices, which one would force us or encourage us to get further, further studies? So let's look at, let's start with answer choice B here. And it says intentional weight loss with diet and exercise. Well, intentional weight loss isn't going to be concerning in an individual with uh, back pain, diet and exercise either. So this is not a correct answer choice. Answer choice C, palpable paraspinal muscle spasm. Okay, so this is good. So as we know, tenderness to palpation of the lumbar, thoracic spine, or cervical spine is concerning for possible fracture, which would lead us to get imaging. However, here it says paraspinal muscle. And so this is not considered what we're going to see is a red flag for low back pain. So that is not the case. How about prolonged use of oxycodone? Well, patients with chronic back pain may have a uh, prolonged use of oxycodone. Also, you know, when you are on pain medication, sometimes you cannot appreciate some of the pain that you're experiencing. However, in this case, someone being on a prolonged oxycodone is not a cause for any further studying. And what we are left with is fever. And so just to kind of confirm that this is going to be the correct answer, red flags of back pain include things like weight loss, unintentional weight loss or night pain, constitutional symptoms, which may point to a tumor, uh, fevers, chills, night sweats, possible infection, acute bony tenderness, which we uh, which we talked about with answer choice C, may um, be consistent with a fracture, and morning stiffness greater than 30 minutes in a young adult may be consistent with a spondylo arthropathy. So in this case, fever is what I'm going to go with for the correct answer here, which is a red flag. And sure enough, fever in a patient with back pain should be concerning and lead us to further investigation. Hey, everyone. Before you go, if you're interested in your own QBank, whether you are an MD or DO, a PA, or an MP, simply go to roshreview.com and sign up for a free trial. See if Rosh Review's content is right for you. Keep learning, keep working hard, and always have a sense of mission about your work. Now is your time. This is Dr. Adam Rosh, signing off.